Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to look at the concept of power and how that relates to the topics of energy that we have been looking at over this lesson. So let's go ahead and get started here. And let's start off with a definition of power. And what we have is that power is the science, at least the scientific definition, I should say, is the rate at which work is done. So when we just talk about work, we've talked about work, we didn't say how fast how long it took to do anything. So if you were raising something against gravity, it could you could do it in a matter of seconds if you're lifting something up or it could take hours or days. And the amount of work which is done is exactly the same. Remember that the work did not depend on the amount of time that it took to do that. However, the power then tells us how much how what, what rate the work is done. So the power is equal to the amount of work divided by the time. So if you do that work over a very long time, then the time is large and the amount of power will be small. If you do it over a very short time, then the amount of power can be very large. And the unit of power is the watt, where one watt is one joule per second. And we see, for example, an image of the space shuttle here launching up into space and again the amount of power expended would depend on the amount of time as it heads out into space. So let's look at some examples here to try to go over this and what we have first example here is the power of a woman running up the stairs. So running up a, a three meter flight of stairs in now we have the time three and a half seconds starting from rest. So she's at rest at the bottom there and runs up the top of the stairs and at the top has a final speed of two meters per second. So let's put everything together. We have our sketch and we can look at our known values. What do we know here? Well, we know the mass of the person doing this. We know the height to which they are climbing. We know the amount of time it took and we know the final velocity. Now remember when we say starting from rest we also know the initial velocity of course is zero. And we don't always include that necessarily but remember that it is there. So what do we have? Let's go ahead and see. We know that the work is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. So the amount of work that was done in climbing these stairs depends on the change in energy. Now if the initial energy would have been zero, she's not moving. And if we define our zero point for potential energy to be the ground here, then there would have been no energy. At the top here, there would have been no net energy. At the top, there is a kinetic energy plus a potential energy. So the amount of work that was done to gain that energy is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And we know that that is the kinetic energy is one half mv squared and the potential energy is mgh. So if we add those two that gives us the amount of work done. And now we want to find the power. The power is the work divided by the time. So the work is the top of this equation and then we divide it by t in the denominator to get power. So if we go ahead and put all of our known values in here, remember we know everything here. We know the mass, we know the velocity, we know the gravitational constant, we know the height, and we know the time. So putting everything into the equation and then calculating, we would find that the power is 538 watts. So that is the amount of power that takes to do this to climb those stairs and end up at a velocity of two meters per second. Now if the time were smaller then that amount of power would be larger. So it takes it takes more to more power to go up faster. You'll have a larger power involved if you're trying to go up the steps faster. If you walked up those steps very slowly, it would require much less effort. So it would require less power. So let's look at some examples of uh, power here. So for example, sunlight. What is the uh, sunlight gives us about 1.3 kilowatts 
per square meter. And that gives you some idea of the intensity of the sun because only a tiny portion of this is actually retained by Earth. So that is sunlight. That's one example of power. And power also gives us energy transfer. It's a way of transferring energy. But some of that energy is always lost as thermal. Remember, we've talked about before that nothing can be completely 100% efficient. So the person running up the stairs in our previous example loses some of their uh, some of their power does not go into accelerating them or getting them up the steps. Some of it is lost as friction as they push against the steps. So some energy is always lost. And here is an ex other example of that. And we talked about efficiency. A coal power plant can consume 2,500 megawatts to produce 1,000 megawatts of electricity. So that's less than a 50% efficiency. 1,500 megawatts is lost as heat. So remember, every th there are things that are more efficient, things that are less efficient. Uh, so it just depends on the exact details of that object. And we can look at a table here to kind of compare some of these things. Uh, what are some different examples of power? Well, starting at the bottom, looking at something very basic, you know, a pocket calculator has a very, very low power rating. And as we go up, a clock has more. Uh, a a traditional incandescent bulb uh, has even more power. And then as you go up to things that you may be familiar with, a clothes dryer, 4,000 uh, watts. Uh, going up to an aircraft carrier, 100 million watts. A lightning bolt, even more, 2 times 10 to the 12th watts. So that would be 2 trillion watts. A volcanic eruption is many times larger than that. Our sun, not just double, not just, but even um, far more times than that. Our sun produces four times 10 to the 26th watts. And that is, again, a lot, a lot of energy. And then we get out to some of the most extreme things. 5 times 10 to the 37th for a supernova explosion, an exploding star. And we have to remember that each of these is a power of 10. So comparing that uh, aircraft carrier to the supernova is 29 powers of 10, 29 extra zeros in the amount of power that exists there. So there is a big range of power between the pocket calculator and the supernova. Now, energy consumption, we can also look at, and we're going to look at an example here in just a minute, of the power consumption rate. So power is the work divided by the time, or the amount of energy divided by the time, where E is the energy that is provided by your electric company. And that energy used is expressed in kilowatt hours. So that's the unit for the energy. So if you examine an electric bill, it will tell you how many kilowatt hours were consumed over that past month. And we can use some of this to do an example and calculate how much it costs to run various appliances. Let's look at a computer. So if we take the example of a computer that consumes 0.2 kilowatts. And if you run that computer for six hours per day, and electricity costs 12 cents per kilowatt hour, then we want to find out how much how much is this going to cost over the course of a month. So let's look and find out. And again, we put up here what we know, there's not really a sketch to draw in this case. So but we can identify what we know, we know the amount of power and we know the amount of time. So six hours per day times 30 days. And then we also know the rate of 12 cents per kilowatt hour. Now we can put this together, we know that the amount of energy used is the power multiplied by the time. Now we do have to make sure we're using the correct units here. So it's a kilowatts. The energy used is kilowatt is 0.2 kilowatts times 
uh, and we want to convert we have six hours per day times 30 days so that's going to convert it into hours and we will then find that the energy used is 36 kilowatt hours so if you recall remember our units here the D's will cancel the days cancel when we do the conversion here and it will be just be kilowatts times hours. Now that's the first part of this but we also want to see how much it costs. So the cost is E the amount of energy used times the rate. So the rate is the 12 cents per kilowatt hour. And if we do that and multiply those two we find that to run a computer for six hours per day would cost four dollars and 32 cents per month and of course that's just one appliance that we use and if computers would be one of the lower ones things that really have high cost rates would be things that involve heating or cooling so an electric stove would be a much a higher higher rate that would be you would use much higher cost a refrigerator would use a have a higher cost so anything that involves heating or cooling uh, using electricity would be much higher than something like the computer here but it gives you an example of how you can go about calculating this so let's go ahead and finish up here with our summary and what we looked at this time was that power is the rate at which work is done so power was the work divided by the time. The energy conversion to power is never 100% efficient. It always is a little bit less than that. And a little bit at least of energy is lost as heat. It can be more or less because some things are very efficient and some things are very inefficient. But we know that energy conversion can never be 100% efficient. And the amount of energy used, we express that in kilowatt hours. And we did an example there to show how to calculate the amount of energy consumed by a computer over the course of a month. So that concludes this lecture on power. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day, everyone. And I will see you in class.